Hi, my name is Kevin Smith, and I'm an Agile and Applications Engineer for Scopes. Today, I'm going to try and I'm going to show you how to use uh, the OR trigger and trigger hold off <clears throat> um, to view two pulses that are widely separated in time, but view them at the same time. So I've already defaulted my scope, which you always want to do every time you're doing a new scope setup. And uh, let's just do a simple auto scale. There we go. And let's crank up the intensity. There we go. So we can see, well, um, and we can see that um, we have a uh, pulse on channel one followed by a pulse on channel two. And the goal here is to be able to see both pulses at the same time. And we can see that if I, um, you know, kind of zoom in on pulse one, whoops, I, I, I can't see pulse two at the same time. Okay, push this in to bring me back to zero there, or, um, all right, so I could uh, try the zoom feature, okay, and make that zoom window bigger, rather, and we'll see that that really doesn't buy me too much, really no more than the full screen there, you know, so that's definitely less than ideal. So um, I'm also going to put the scope into high res mode just to pull out some of the noise and not have a nice crisp signal. There we go. All right. Um, so now what I want to do is I'm going to go to this time scale, which I know will be enough to see channel uh, the pulse on channel 2. And these guys are occurring at about 1 kilohertz. Okay. Um, so now what I want to do is I want to change my trigger. I want to change it from an edge to an or which is still an edge pattern, okay? And we can see the signals walking around. But um, the auto scale, it's worth pointing out, um, already set the threshold levels for both channel, ones and, channel 1 and channel 2. Um, so if you didn't use auto scale, you'd want to set an edge trigger on channel 1 and then channel 3, um, use, setting the trigger level independently for each. But auto scale took care of that for me. So really what I want to do is I want to set a rising edge on channel 3. and Whoops, I want to do a rising edge on channel one as well. Okay, so it's basically, channel one leads in time, so pretty much by the time the scope rearms, it's, 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 um, it keeps seeing channel one. So how can we fix this? We're going to use trigger hold off, okay? Um, and I found that about, whoops, on the order of a millisecond or increments of a millisecond work pretty well. So there we go, oh, right around there, I think. Let me actually walk over to the scope. So using the remote front panel, it's way easier to spin the knob, of course, than the software knob. Let's see if I can get this guy dialed in. And you're definitely going to have to do some experimenting, because um, this, uh, what a actually is going to work, depends largely on the time scale you're working with and the timing relationship between the two signals. There we go. So now, let's see what happens if I go here. Beautiful. There we go. I'm looking at both pulses. I can throw measurements down on each one. And if I just hit the single hard key, right, so really, it's going back and forth between each one. Okay? It's not exactly back and forth, but, um, yeah. It's more, it's kind of one, one than the other, but in run mode, it's updating so fast because this is a repetitive signal, it looks like there's that DC line. At this point, at this point, now that we have a good setup that we like, okay, um, now that we have a good setup that we like, it's probably a good idea to save um, a uh, setup, all right? Um, And now I can recall that for when I come back in tomorrow or, or whatever. Um, we can also play games with um, the persistence. So, for example, if you have a much slower um, signal or a much lower repetition rate, you might have channel 1 come on or channel 3 come on, and then the waveforms uh, <clears throat> go away. All right? Um, but with this particular signal, they're occurring rather rapidly. So what we can do is we can either turn on infinite persist, or we can go with variable persistence um, so that the waveforms uh, fade uh, over time. Okay? 
Um, and these, I think this will go up to like to a minute, which is probably excessive, but you know, a few seconds is probably good. And uh, clear persistence, clear display. And so in run mode, um, uh, these signals are real fast, so it doesn't have a great effect here. But um, the idea is to keep the signals on screen for you longer. And you could also use uh, this with segmented memory. Okay, and let's find out what's going to happen here. Let's just crank up a few segments. Segmented memory. And it's already capturing them. Now it's playing them. And with the persistence on, you can see that they stay up there. Okay. And I'm going to stop that for now. And then... Um, Again, so you, this is a, a setup where you need to tweak it excessively. You may need to do, do a lot of tweaking to it. Um, also of importance could be changing the, the trigger coupling mode from auto to normal. So if the signal re repetition rate is real slow, we definitely want to be in or, uh, normal mode so it doesn't time out and force an internal trigger. Um, one of the other, uh, while I was setting this up, um, I also found that, um, whoops, found that uh, for one particular hold off setting, if I used um, uh, falling edges, I also get a nice result. Let's see, now I've saved that setup to setup eight. And I can recall that. And the point here is again, that instead of using rising edges, I'm using falling edges, and we can see that in the trigger node um, where the trigger position is. So I hope you find this useful. Thank you for your attention.